All right, hey guys, Ashy here, back again with another SFM tutorial video. And due to popular demand, this series will continue going on. So this is part three, if it wasn't obvious enough by the thumbnail and title, yada yada. And in this part, I will be teaching you depth of field, motion blur, and AO. You guys will know what that is by the end of this video. Scene build, walk cycles, and rigging. Now, at the time of recording, uh, my most recent video is the Glitch Trap short. In that short, there is like a little walking section that Glitch Trap does, and I'm gonna real quick show you guys how you do that. So, as you see by this shot here, as you see, Glitch Trap is walking on this dirty tile that I got, and I'm gonna real quick show you how I did that. And it's a lot more simple than people actually think it is. We're actually gonna go into a new session for my sake. Hang on, y'all. All right, so now that I've got a basic little thing in the thing set up right here, I'm going to show you how to make a walk cycle now. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna do the f actual first thing that we'll be learning here, rigging. So the rigging is pretty much a way of making it easier to pose and animate a certain parts of your ragdoll, ragdoll, model. So for example, say I wanted to animate the legs to be a bit smoother and a bit different than usual. So what you would do, you would go to the foot bone, bip underscore foot underscore L, hopefully it says something related to that. You right click the bone, you go to where it says DAG utilities menu, then you go down and create underscore IK underscore constraint. And for a lot of you, that's not actually going to be there because that is actually its own add-on, which I will show you now. So this add-on right here, create IK constraint script. This is probably one of the most subscribed uh, scripts in all of SFM because of how useful and helpful it is. So a link to this will be in the description below so that you can easily just click and subscribe to it. Easy as that. And once that's downloaded, you might have to restart SFM if it doesn't show up. But if it does show up, just right click, DAG utilities menu, create IK constraint, and the name of the bone will change. It'll be rig underscore bip underscore foot underscore L or something related to that. And you'll see that the knee has also been rigged. Reason for that is if I go ahead and rig the other foot here, so we don't mess anything up. If I grab the pelvis and move it down, you see the feet stay. That's what an IK rig does. It pretty much makes the uh, feet their own like bone in a way, if that makes any sense. So now that we have our bones nice and rigged, let's get a starting position set up. And the way I normally do it, I would think of how I stand. So I usually stand, you know, knees slightly bent, maybe one of my hips or like my hip is slightly tilted and then my torso just eventually straightens back out maybe in a bit of a curvy-ish pattern like that and then we just pose the head just to be straight also another thing with ik rigs a very easy way to do them or like with the head is you click the little plus sign next to the head and you click this little square right where it's set or right next to where it says rot which stands for rotation. So now, if I say grab the spine, for example, and just move it around, you'll see the head isn't affected by rotation, unlike how it would be without it being locked. So yeah, all right. So with how you want the arms, I'd say have them somewhat straight, but also slightly curved. Uh, lucky for me, Glitch Trap already kind of has that prepared for me. So lucky me. Also, if your character does have collarbones, like how Glitchstrap does, just make them slightly down. Because you want them to be nice and relaxed during the walk cycle. Just like that, we have ourselves a pretty good looking, uh, just standing little guy right here. As I said before, you get your root transform, you make your starting keyframe using M. So yeah, we got our starting keyframe. So we're gonna go say, five seconds forward and we're gonna move him just a little forward we're not gonna make him bump or do anything just straight forward and you'll see he gently and carefully moves i'm gonna make eh, we'll keep it like that for now so once you've got that you can go ahead and pick a foot of your choice i'm gonna go with the left foot so you get your starting keyframe as always then you 
you know, you press space. Or actually, go to right around where the knees would start bending in, which I'll show you how to fix in just a moment. Then, you can do one of two things. Make a new keyframe, or you can move the original starting keyframe to where your current uh, playhead is at. And then, you can start moving the leg like so. I'm also just gonna real quick fix the knees, which all you gotta do with the knees, just move them both forward by a bunch. So with the way you wanna start off, have the foot, like, kind of gently come off the ground so you can see i have his foot like bent have his toe on the ground like how you would when you normally walk then in the next section it's going to be his kind of kind of like this yeah so if we just go back you can see already looks pretty good so far so then you want to go even further forward and this is going to be the straight section which is pretty much you just straighten the leg out and prepare the foot for a landing like this now that that's done and now for the final keyframe of the first step we want to go ahead and put the foot back down fully on the ground now that we have our first footstep completely done and made let's see how it looks not too bad but we can add a little something to uh to do that in other words, we're just gonna make him a little faster. We're gonna reduce that by a couple seconds. That makes him way faster. So, we're gonna also make the keyframes a little closer together. So that, that's a pretty solid step. And then with the second step, you basically might actually be able to just copy the keyframes from right where the foot leaves off on. So for example, it leaves off there. And then you go here, just paste the same keys. Only instead, you move the foot to be, you know, straight and where it's meant to be. Okay, so that's a little too far forward, so we're gonna bring that back just a smidge and see how that looks. Yeah, it looks decent. It's a pretty lazy walk cycle. But yeah, um, that's how you make a walk cycle. Next! Alright. So as you see here, I've got Spring Bonnie, he just chilling out, he ain't doing nothing. And you may also see, I have two other little windows open now. We can just ignore this one, this is for my personal stuff. Reference image. This is pretty important when it comes to scene build if you want to go off of a real life section. So basically what you want to do, you want to get the image that you want to use, which for example, we're going to set up an interrogation room. So you want to right click, save the image as a PNG or whatever it is, then you want to go into the Steam Workshop and right here, Reference Image Widget. Now if you don't want to go into the workshop and find it yourself, a link to this will also be in the description for you to just click on, subscribe, etc. And once you do that, you want to go back into SFM, go to the Scripts tab in the top left, go to Kiwi Fruit Dev and click Reference Image. Then, this window should pop up just right in the center, right here. You want to drag this, put it wherever you want in these little squares. I usually like to have it in the bottom left corner. So, I got a new image, we click load image, we load the JPEG or PNG, and it'll show up. And just like that, we have ourselves a reference image. And we can use this to determine the general, like, look that we want to give for this little guy here. So, uh... There's not really many ways for me to teach you how to do scene build, just some like tips and tricks to help you with it. Um, I guess one thing would be to like just search up wall on the workshop, download that, and go with that. So I'm gonna do the scene build for this. I'm gonna speed it up so that you can s sorta at least see how I do my process. Three, two, one, and action. I asked my mates if they want to escape, and they say they do. Machine, cause it's mad.
So, after that little thing, we see that I have a pretty decent looking scene build so far. So, as you did see, again, I basically just went through random things on my user mod or just SFM in general that I thought might fit. So I have the paper pals, I got some wires, I got a stack of papers, stack of boxes. As you see, you know, I got some pretty, pretty weird walls, nice roof. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do scene build. Um, right, we can kind of just knock out two birds with one stone here again. So depth of field, it, DOF, what I had mentioned at the start, is basically background blur. So the way that you enable it is you, you know, you right click, you go to render settings, then you check progressive refinement, and then you check depth of field. And then if you press F2, you'll see that the background is blurry. Now I believe, yeah, I've already changed up the focal distance, which what you would want for focal distance, note this is in camera settings, what you want for focal distance if you're using a FNAF animatronic. You want it to be just barely, like, touching the head, right? So, for example, you know, if I have it like this, that's too much, so I go one more. Excuse me, I got hiccups. So I go one more, and aperture is how blurry the background is. So if I turn that all the way down and go to F2, nothing changes because there's no aperture, so it can't be blurry. But if I turn up the aperture all the way, and then go to F2. You see the background is super blurry and the middle of Spring Bonnie is super clear, which is the point of depth of uh, field. It's meant to focus the camera on one specific thing, that thing in this being Spring Bonnie. So yeah, there's depth of field out of the way. What I would normally suggest is about 75% aperture. Like, it still lets you, you know, see the background pretty nice while also getting to view the main animation or render or whatever you're doing. And another thing that I forgot to do, bloom scale all the way down, SSAO bias and SSAO strength all the way up and SSAO radiance slightly down. Which leads us onto the next thing, ambient occlusion, which is basically SSAO. Uh, the way you enable it is the same way you enable depth of field. You just go into render settings, check that. And as you see, there's a huge difference. So if I go into my work camera and zoom in here, you'll see that there's a bunch of these uh, random black uh, pixels all around. That is ambient occlusion. It's meant to add uh, more depth into your, you know, just general area. And you can see like it stands out a lot. And there's a really simple way to fix that. So you go back into render, render settings and you uh, enable sub pixel jitter AA. Click OK, then you go to F2 and you'll see a lot of it has, it's gone. But there's another way to make it basically so that it blends right in with the character. You go back to render settings and enable motion blur. Wait, you're not done. We're gonna show you camera settings for this. So the normal amount of camera settings I would suggest using is 128 for depth of field and 64 for motion blur. Now you may have to turn this down or just use camera settings depending on how good or bad your PC might be, but anything above 128 over 64, too much. So yeah, click okay. See that nothing changes in F3 because F2 is essentially like the final product. The full render. And as you see, background's nice and blurry, everything's super smooth. This is peak. All right, I'll do the lighting like another time off camera. But yeah, that's pretty- oh, right before I end, I'm gonna answer a few questions that you guys had in the comments at the last tutorial video. So right here, IKE country- IKE's country balls said, Thanks, but I just want one question. How do you import dupes and models from Gmod onto SFM? So, I got bad news. You can't import dupes from S from Gmod to SFM because that involves multiple models from multiple different add-ons. It won't work. Trust me, I've tried it. But there is a way that you can import models and materials from Gmod into SFM. And 
you do that by getting something called GM Publisher. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to use GM Publisher because that's not what this video is about. This is about SFM. Anyway, so that was actually the only comment, but if you'd like to be shown or mentioned in these tutorial videos for your questions, make sure to leave any questions you may have about tutorials or things I could show in my next tutorial for you to learn. And with that being said, I hope to see you all in the next one. Hope you all did enjoy. Feel free to subscribe, and I will see you all later. Peace out. I'm a pearl imitator, I'm a poem sky. We're a cowboy.